Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to build, well, the thumbnail that you just clicked. That's right, we're going to build one of these thumbnails that you see on the Tailwind Labs YouTube channel, and we're going to do it from scratch with Tailwind CSS. Let's get right into it. Right, so we're starting from complete scratch here. And here we have this reference thumbnail. So we're not building this one, but we're going to build another one and compare it to that one. Okay, so let's start by creating a rectangle for our thumbnail. So we're going to have arbitrary width and height here, W640 pixels, and the height will be 360 pixels. And let's also give a background of white to this rectangle. And the dimensions are lining up nicely. If we break down what we have on this thumbnail, uh, we first have a content section here. Then we have this decorative circle on the left, another circle here on the right, and then these two images and the play button. So I'll quickly add a couple of comments. No problem. And so we're going to build all of these sections, but we'll start with our content. So we have a category here, the video title and the Tailwind CSS logo. So let's have a paragraph tag for the category and it says how with build it, then an h1 tag for the title, YouTube thumbnail with Tailwind CSS. And then for the Tailwind CSS logo, we have a big SVG file here. Okay, so let's style this and I'll start with the SVG so we can close the SVG tag after that. And we'll add a class here of W36, just so it has the right size. And I will close that SVG tag now. Right, so we want these three elements to be placed at the bottom left of the card. And one way we can achieve this is by using Flexbox. So I will wrap these three elements in a div, and that div will have a class of flex. But we want the elements to stack vertically, so I'll go flex call. And to align the elements at the bottom of the card, I'll use justify end. But as you see, it's not working, and this is because the container is not using the full height. You can see that we only uh, use the top bit and we want to tell the flex container to have a height of full. So H full, and now it goes to the bottom like we want. So let's get rid of this debugging color. We're going to add some padding to separate it from the edges. So here I can add the class P-8. All right, this is getting a bit closer. So now let's apply the font styles to match these two elements. So on the paragraph tag, let's add a class. And we're going to go with uppercase, font semi-bold, text extra small, text purple 600. And it's now bothering me that these elements are so close to each other. So let's add a spacing utility on the wrapper here, space Y4. Quite often when you use uppercase text, it's a good idea to increase the letter spacing a little bit. And that's the case here. So here we're going to add a class of tracking wider. That'll do for this element. So next let's do the title class. This one will have text 4XL, font extra bold, and the color will be text gray 900. So that looks really good, but maybe our text is a bit too wide here and we might add a max width or width container to our content. So why don't we come up here and add a width of two thirds and that's now going to only use two thirds here, which is pretty good. Okay, I think our content section is done now and it looks very similar to that one. So next, why don't we tackle this circle here with the play button? So let's move under our first comment, which should be actually top left circle. And here we're going to have a decoration element. So let's have a div and add an area hidden attribute set to true. And let's style this with some utility classes. Let's begin with width and height. So I'm gonna go width of 200 pixels and height of 200 pixels as well. A background color of purple 200. And let's make it circle with rounded full. All right, so we've obviously messed up our design here and pushed the content down. So what we want is this circle to have a position of absolute so it doesn't interfere with where the content is positioned. So let's also give a class of absolute to our circle. And now we're going to offset the positioning of this with top and left values. But if I go top zero, see what happens, it comes right to the top of the viewport. So we want our elements to be absolutely positioned relatively 
to our card here. So we need to add a class of relative to our white rectangle. And now top zero is top zero of this element. All right, so we wanna move it up and to the left. And so to go up, we're gonna go minus top and let's go with 16. Broop. And let's go with minus left 12. Broop. Nice, so the position looks correct, but it's quite obvious that we want the circle to be cropped and not visible outside of the thumbnail. And the way we can do this is by preventing anything from bleeding out by using the overflow hidden class. And now the circle is cropped properly. So next I'm going to paste an SVG for the play button triangle here. And we will place this inside of our circle. Okay, and so let's add a couple of classes to it. So I want a width of 64 pixels and a height of 72 pixels. By the way, a value like this exists in the default config. I could have used W16, uh, but because we're styling a decorative uh, SVG element, we want to be clear about the intent of specific pixel values. And so now our triangle is completely gone. Let me remove the overflow hidden for a second. And what happens is uh, the SVG element has been placed to the top left of our element here. And so what we want to do is have it perfectly centered or almost perfectly centered. So we're going to use CSS grid to center it and then offset it with a bit of margin. So I'll bring back my overflow hidden class. And in our purple circle wrapping the SVG, I will go display grid. And then to center vertically and horizontally, I will go place items center. Boom. And that's already very close, but let's slightly offset the position with margin left three and margin top three. And I think we are very, very close to the reference design here. All right, sweet. So next we're going to take care of the other circle. Once again, we're talking decoration here. So area hidden equals true and some classes for styling. So let's hard code some dimensions once again, 512 pixels for both the width and the height, BG purple 200 once again, and let's add a position of absolute. And that surfaces an interesting issue here. When you have absolutely positioned elements like this one, if you want something to come on top of it, it needs to have another position than static. So here, if we add a position of relative to our content, it should come back on top. There you go. All right, so we want our elements to be rounded full. And the positioning is wrong, but it actually looks really cool like that. So it looks like we need to move it to the right by a lot and then up a little bit. So let's move it up a bit with minus top 20. And this time we're going to offset it from the right with minus right 56. Boom. So in our Tailwind Labs thumbnails, we don't really mind if the text overlaps the circle. It actually looks quite interesting like this. We sometimes play with the letter spacing of the title to move a bit, but I think here it looks fine like that. And our circle is done, so we can now move to the two images here. Let's come down here. And one more time, we're going to have an absolutely position element. So absolute. And inside of there, we're going to have two images. So typically we use one image of me talking and then one screenshot of the code or that shows something interesting from the video. So let's take two screenshots and use these. A screenshot of myself here. So let's take a cool pose and I'm going to drag this image inside there. So now we can use that image here. So slash image slash image one dot JPEG. And the alt tag will say YouTuber cheerfully giving a Shaka. Let's save that. Woo. Uh, obviously it's a little bit too big. So let's also apply some classes and we want specific dimensions here. So I'll go with W64 and height 36. Right. And this doesn't appear too distorted at all, actually. But if I had height of 48, for example, you can see the image stretches. Uh, so what we want to do is to avoid any stretching is to use object fit cover here. And so it kind of crops the image to the available space and you saw it jump just a little bit also subtly. Right, let's change the positioning of this by coming on the parent wrapper and go top eight and right eight. Very cool. So it's missing a couple of things here, the rounded edges, the shadow that you might not see and the little rotation to the side. So let's go with rounded 2XL 
shadow to Excel as well. And we're going to tilt it a little bit with rotate three. Boom. Look at this. This is really, really good. All right, now let's take a screenshot of some of our code. Maybe we can highlight the title here. And I'm going to drop my other image. And now for the second image, I'll duplicate the first image. And here we will have image dash two. The alt text will say screenshot of Tailwind CSS code. And we can keep the same classes, except we want to rotate the image the other way. So we go minus rotate three. So that's good, but we want to move this image to the right a bit, obviously. And so here we can use a translate transform utility to do that. So I'll go translate x16. And yeah, I think uh, it's getting really, really close here. This is nice. One more thing to create, and it's our play button here. One more time, we're going to absolutely position that button. So absolute. And for now, we're just going to offset it from the right with right 12. Inside of that, I'm going to use an anchor tag, assuming that this is a link to a video URL. And there's not going to be any actual text inside this link, so we're still going to provide some screen reader friendly text. Watch the video. And here we're going to give a class of screen readers only. All right, so let's style our anchor tag, starting with the width and height of 12 and a background of purple 500. And so right now it's not showing because the anchor tag is in line and is not respecting uh, the height of 12. So for now, let's use block, but we'll remove this in a little bit. So let's make it circle with rounded full. Okay, so now we have the correct offset from the right, but we want this button to be vertically centered here. And so one thing we can do here is make sure that the parent wrapper is occupying the whole height of the card and then once again, use CSS grid to vertically align our play button. So in our wrapper here, we're going to add inset Y zero. So it stretches from top to bottom and display grid. So now that this anchor tag is a grid child, I can get rid of the display block and the height is still respected. And to vertically align this element in the center, we're going to go with items center. Voila. So now we're going to take care of the borders, but here we're actually going to use ring utilities. So back on the anchor tag, I'm going to go with ring four and ring white. As we've done before, I'm going to use an SVG for the play button triangle. And I will paste this right after our span. And since it's too big, let's uh, add a width class of W4. And as you've seen many times by now, center it with grid and place items center. So now it's perfectly centered, but as designers know, there's something funny about centering a triangle inside of a circle. And because there's more uh, pixels on that side, it feels a little bit off to the left. Ew. And so this is pretty subtle, but I'm going to add a margin left of one and look at our triangle here when I save. Uh -huh. And yeah, that made a difference. It now feels perfectly centered and balanced, Yay! even if it's actually a little bit offset to the right. And to wrap things up, let's add a little hover state on our button, something we couldn't do on the image, obviously. So here we have a background of purple 500 and on hover, we want a background purple 400. And let's also add a transition. Let's try that. Very nice. All right, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I certainly had a lot of fun putting it together. And yes, the thumbnail you clicked on is actually a screenshot of the build that we've put together in this video, as you can tell by this photo here. And that about wraps it up for this video. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.